Hello everyone and welcome to a devlog for Amber's Tale. For those of you who are new here, Amber's Tale is a truly non-linear metroidvania that allows you to choose the order in which you choose abilities and ultimately explore the world. In this video, I'll be laying the foundation for making enemies that actually feel fun to engage with and also have a purpose in the world. Now, our Metroidvania has very little variety when it comes to enemy types. At the moment, they just kind of patrol back and forth and deal damage to you if you touch them. And although these types of enemies do definitely have their place in the game, we do still need something a little bit more exciting. What we need is some kind of bestiary. I mean, it's all well and good adding cool looking enemies with epic abilities, but they still need to make sense in the context of the story and fit in well with the design of the levels. We need to make sure that every enemy we make is made with intention and is also balanced depending on where and when in the world you interact with it. We'll need to make sure we have a good variety of visual designs, ones that actually allow you to recognize an enemy by its silhouette alone but we also need a wide range of mechanics, ones that keep the player adapting throughout their gameplay experience, but also onboard them, teaching them the mechanics that they'll need to use when facing the bosses. Now that is a lot to handle. Sadly, it's not quite as easy as just coding some movement and adding some art. We need to work backwards. We need to start with the boss. Before we do though, I want to shout out It's a Mogo for being a celestial backer on Patreon. Thank you so much for supporting the development of Amber's Tale. We would also be super grateful if you would consider liking the video, subscribing, or even wishlisting Amber's Tale on Steam. It's one of the best ways you can support our game, and it's completely free to do. Thank you so much. So in Amber's Tale, for now at least, the first main boss that you'll encounter is the Corrupt Colossal. Now, we've met the Corrupt Colossal before in our old Kickstarter demo, and I personally think it was one of, if not the best part of the demo, albeit being very difficult for a starter boss anyway. And part of the reason for that is we hadn't taught the plays the mechanics that the boss had. None of the enemies that you'd faced up until then shared any similar abilities. There was nothing to teach you to play defensively against the slam attack, the attack that sent shockwaves either side of the colossal, and there was also nothing showcasing that enemies can attack you when you jump over them either, something that actually counters pogoing in the game. This has to change. You'll face this boss at the entrance to Castle Ilaria. More on the castle later though, but you'll battle it just before entering the main hub for the game. So we need to make sure that players have dealt with similar abilities abilities before that. So we need to make sure that there are enemies in both the forest and the cave areas that have similar abilities. Now I'll be going over some of these enemies in more detail in future videos, as for now we just need to make sure we have the foundations that actually make the enemies work, because I mean the scripts that we currently have are a little bit broken, plus the way that they're programmed is great for the way that we handled enemies previously, where there are a lot of shared states, but going forward we want to have a lot of independent and unique abilities from enemy to enemy. This means that the only real things that are going to be shared between enemies are things like taking damage, moving, and idling. So we need to refactor our scripts taking this into consideration. Now I want to keep using state machines as we all know how I feel about those. They're amazing. But this time I wanted to tackle it in a slightly different way. I wanted to use a different style of state machine. One that used enums for states. An enum is basically a value type that defines a set of named constants, or in our case, states. We can essentially write a list of different enum states our enemy could be in at any given time, and only execute code for that state. It makes things really nice and easy to follow, and also really quite tidy. Let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas for different attacks that these enemies could have. I'd be really interested to hear your suggestions. For now, we're going to keep it simple and just add an attack to an enemy. Nothing fancy to start off with, but something that still poses more of a threat than a fox. The art we're using naturally is also a placeholder, so bear that in mind. But with this enemy, when we're in range, it'll actually attack in a two attack sequence, meaning you can't just run up and hit it until it dies. Each swing will deal damage separately and knock you back in a different direction depending on how the swing was executed. Okay, now we've got this in place, but it doesn't feel good to kill it. It doesn't feel juicy. We need to add some visual effects and a little bit of screen shake. So I remade the shockwave effect from the demo, implemented a screen shake 
system and also added a few little visual effects. Now this feels a lot better to attack. From this point, we can iterate on this state machine by simply adding new states and connecting them together for different enemy types. Now for this episode, I haven't actually made any more enemies as I've been on holiday for the last 10 days in Latvia, visiting Mrs. Lazy's family. The next enemy I'll be working on is an enemy that mimics the shockwave attack and I'm really excited to sink my teeth into that one. We've been working really hard on visualizing how the castle will feel thematically in the world of Amberstyle. Hannah has done an incredible job on these assets. I can't wait to expand the zone more and discover the secrets of the knights and alchemists that used to reside within the walls. One of the main focuses I've had is making sure the lighting feels good. Within the castle, there will be some areas of limited visibility. Within these areas, you will need a lantern to explore them further. I wonder who could give you that, or even be that. There is a lot more work to do on the zone, such as adding things like foreground assets to help with adding depth. And in the coming months, I'll be making a devlog showing the full process of designing a level and how I structure the world space, as a lot of you have shown a lot of interest in seeing that. Developing games can seem overwhelming, whether it's mastering AI, optimizing game logic, or handling tricky math, but with Brilliant, you can boost your skills and tackle these challenges head on. Brilliant's hands-on, interactive lessons teach you problem solving from the ground up, making it six times more effective than just watching videos. Whether you're brushing up on fundamentals, or diving into advanced concepts. Brilliant breaks down complex problems into manageable steps. And want to learn on the go? Brilliant's mobile app lets you level up anywhere, anytime. Build daily habits and sharpen your mind in just minutes a day. Their programming courses help you start building programs from day one. Get familiar with Python using their drag and drop editor and learn key coding elements like loops, variables, and conditionals to create your own games and apps. Ready to power up your problem solving skills? To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash lazytstudios or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual subscription.